bien. That's not a... Vamos a pelear lo más serio posible. That's not no a fight. Que te, que te lastime. Kendo just standing on the outside, popping that jab. Bang, bang, banging that jab off of, to his head, to it, not closing that gap. He talked about how important that was. He can't leave that big distance there. Now he does step in here with one good left hook, and that's not a great left hook because it was a big raising off the bridge of the nose, but he needs to land those flush. Now you'll see him okay, miss two big go, shots, go and Kendo get a little cocky and start playing, taunting to it, trying to get him out of his game mentally. That could be dangerous. What if you make a mistake? Oh, yeah. Guys, there it is again. He better know what he's doing if he's going to clown around with Tua. We enter round four, scheduled for 12. Tua in the black trunk, so Kendo in the silver with the black trim. Kendo showing supreme confidence here by doing what he did at the end of the last round. And as that round opened up, he uh, got hit with a fair left hook and didn't even blink. We talked about how uh, some people thought Okendo oh, might be risking his number one status in the WBO by fighting a guy so dangerous as David Tua, even though Tua has had his difficulties of late. But he doesn't care about that, Okendo. Oh, he says, bring on all comers. After Tua, he says, bring on Vladimir Klitschko, the champion of the WBO. Bring on Lewis, bring on Tyson, anybody. It would be interesting to see the adjustments he makes for a guy six foot eight. Oh, yeah. All right, Vaughn here. Shot. Shot. Blowing up too much. Kissing okay, with the right, left hook right, again. Let go of him, Dave. Let go of him, Fred. Okay, get no, out, get out. Just too fast for him. Elusive. At least to this point. We'll see if Tua starts to get frustrated and runs out of gas, as he did against Burris. He ran out of gas midway in that fight. We talked about the conditioning problems in the past. Now some more head and shoulder movement by Tua. Something we don't see much of. Well, you know, here's the thing. You can't duck or slip every single punch that comes from an opponent. You take too much energy to do that, too time consuming, and then you bite on every feint. What you need to do is put your hands in a place where you can block and stuff them. When you stuff them, fire back, block them, fire right there, fire back. He's got to let the punches go. He cannot win the fight like this. I'm just not convinced as once again, a little uh, playing around there by uh, Okendo. I'm not quite convinced that Tua is better at this weight. I still maintain that if he comes down to around 230 and he gets in shape at 230 and leans out and stays off the weights, and does things to get his punching speed up and intent and endurance and number of punches he can throw, that that's the two of old. Yes, holes. all of his big victories were when he was in his 220s. Rachman, Ruiz, Mascaya. The fight with Abiyabuchi, uh, which was dropped one of the fights of the century. 226 in that fight. And he was very busy and very intense. A lot of trading. That could have gone either way. We approach the final 20 seconds, round four. But they seem to feel, they being the two of people, that he is stronger in the 240s. Well, he's clearly stronger, but he's not more effective. Would he want right. to be stronger or more effective? That is my contention. Right, but it pulls him back in so many other significant areas of the game, yes? Ha! Well, we were talking about the weight of Tua just moments ago. Let's show it to you in black and white. We'll take a look at it, okay? He goes up to Lennox Lewis, 245, and Bird, 233. We're all, he had all his impressive knockouts, his really incredibly good performances. You take a look at look at this, Look at the weights here. Look at the weight here. Well, we're going to clear that. Look at the weights here. These weights are high. Everything else... Under here, under in the 220, under 230, here, and all of those weights, he was incredibly effective. He was very fast, tenacious, great endurance, great speed, and, and still had that go. great chin. Move closer and let your arms go. This guy is fighting out of fear, and you are not throwing. I need you to throw punches. Keep Put breath. them together, combinations. Right hand, left hook, right hand. Right hand to the body, left hook. Throw punches. Sounds like a broken record, doesn't it? Yeah, him and me. Go, go. Throw, punches. throw punches. Yep. Okay, guys, Kevin Barry being him. Round number five, scheduled for 12. Tua in the black trunks. Again, just missing with the left hook. They want to see more punches. They want to see combinations from Tua. Okendo in the silver with the black trim. Something I've talked about in the past, too. When you have a big man like that, and you throw a big, giant left hook or right hand. 
and you don't hit anything, it takes the same energy to stop that punch. You get tired twice as quick. And Kendo looking to stay undefeated. 22-0, 13 knockouts. To a 39 and 3, 34 knockouts. Okay, break, break, break. Friends, I told you, don't lean on the back of his head, brother. Okay, let's go. Come on. Bayabuchi, Lewis, and Bird. Latour needs to win and needs to, I think, look impressive in order to regain the stature he once possessed. And get back into the heavyweight title picture. There's a left hook that, that sends Okendo reeling. But it may have been a balance shot. And it's one and done. He's not in right. position to hit number two, three, and four. He doesn't throw them, but he wasn't even in position to throw them should he want to. Quick look at press row scoring. Mike from the Beaver County Times, Ron Borges from the Boston Globe. And I think you know who that third guy is. He's got it a draw. Hockey legend Mario Lemieux on hand tonight from the Pittsburgh Penguins. I must be really confused. I have a four zip for a kendo. I can't see how two is actually won a full round. Based on what? Well, you know what? The effect of aggressor. He hasn't been very effective. Okay, he has break, not break, landed break, more punches. Let me have it. 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 Let me Body shots, overhand right by two, but Okendo escapes that. That was the most effective combination. Nice body shots and two to the head by two. Almost everything landing there. And no real ill effects on Okendo. Okendo continues to move, continues to jab. Tua just stands there. Not much movement from him. He just comes straight in and out. But again, not cutting down the distance and not throwing enough punches. Okendo in and out, stick and move. Combination to the head by Okendo. He's scoring and registering points with the judges. See, one big combination by two, but the rest of the round has been Okendo. How do you give the round to two? It's just hard for me. Ha! Well, let's dissect this thing a little further as we go inside the ropes with Bobby Chen. Well, it's been, a, it's been a night of wild swinging for David Tua. Missing a big left hook there, right hand. Another left hook over the top. Swinging and missing wildly. This is going to catch up and eventually make him a little tired. Another big right hand. Telegraphing left and right. These are big punches that take a lot of energy to stop. But they don't land on anything. You see it was consistent throughout the first few rounds. Now watch Tua, one good effective combination. He steps in, nice two body shots, one to the top of the head. But that's, that's the most he did in the entire round. That's it. The two of fans are out in full force. Part of this sellout crowd of better than 5,000 in Chester, West Virginia. Well, we wanted to know prior to the fight if Tua has indeed learned from his losses and and show tonight that he has made the adjustments and corrections against the boxer mover types and and so far the answer is no well, his last round was his best round he, he opened up with a good clean crisp left hook had a couple of combinations on the far side of the ring in the corner it was his best round maybe he pulled that round off but i can't give him the first four once again we're trying to determine if he has brought in his hip pocket a plan b he even said after the Lewis fight that he didn't take Lewis seriously and didn't have a plan B. I just don't get that. Plan B is usually a smart thing to have, but it's also imperative that your trainer knows how to make the adjustments or instruct you to, and that's also a stigma on the training at that time. Well, what Kevin Barry has been saying to David Tua seems to be falling on deaf ears. And also, the man in front of Tua has a little something to do with what's happening. Here. Well, I was going to say, to give Fresno Crandall his yeah. credit, he's, he's really putting punches into his face, giving him something to worry about. And Tua's not giving him back much to worry about. And Okendo able to slip and slide and use a little escape apology on Chris Bird there. 
because he was almost pinned against the ropes by Tua. When Tua works in behind the jab. He's clearly the stronger, better puncher of the two, and he lands and is effective. And Kendall has to tie him up, otherwise he gets steamrolled. But you don't see Tua doing it behind the jab enough. And it takes a lot of energy for a short man to do that, too. Pardon me, Bobby. I noticed Tua is breathing very heavily now. We're in round six, scheduled for 12, not even halfway. by uh, Tua, but he didn't follow it. Well, I guess he could because uh, Kendall was so far away when he was hit by it. You see here he's following him. He's not working him behind the jab. He's following him around. He's leaving that big gap, that big distance that he has to shut down. Body shots again by uh, by Tua. He's really sucking wind here. This is with the left high wide left hook. Telegraph that one. Kendall scores with the left of the head. Now the jab, another jab by Okendo. Those are landing. Tua is looking tired now. His hands are low. Trying to get that second win. And once again, I just have to question the conditioning process with regard to Tua. I always joke about speed times massive and destructive power, but you know what? It takes much, much more. Oh, oh good right hand by Okendo. Right up the ah. head. Big finish by Okendo there in round six. Dave Von Tempo standing by with a former champion. Dave? Okay, Steve. Tito Trinidad is here along with his translator, Jose Gomez. Tito, how is your countryman, Fresno Kendo, doing tonight? Como, como eh, Fresno Kendo está haciendo esta noche? Bueno, creo que Fresno... Debe estar a la venta de la tarjeta porque está utilizando su jab muy bien y combinando muy bien. He should be on, on the score. He should be out front because he's doing a great combination and he's doing for now good. Got a fight coming up May 11th. Are you ready? Esa pelea que viene en mayo 11. ¿Tú estás ready? Sí, estoy entrando, estoy entrando bien fuerte para mayo 11 y voy a ganar para mi gente de Puerto Rico. Yes, I'm training for that fight to May 11 and I'm going to win that fight to Puerto Rico. All right, thank you very much, both guys. Best of luck. Back to you, Steve. All right, Dave. Uh, Tito uh, bouncing back from the Bernard Hopkins loss. I don't think he's going to have that much trouble with uh, Hasim Sharifi. Halfway through this fight, you can already sense, you know, if there's no knockout, then it's going to be a close one. How do you have it unofficial? Unofficial, I have it uh, five rounds to one. I think that Akendo's really established himself. I gave the fifth round only to to, uh, to end. He was okay, coming break, out break, working break, break, well, but break. Come he's, on, let's he's go, walked go, around go, following go, Kendall on, too much, go, eating the jab in certain combinations. His combinations have been effective and have been four, five, and six. They've been one and two, sometimes three. So you have Okendo ahead convincingly. Five rounds to one, 59-55. Well, we'll see how the, uh, the folks at ringside have it. If this fight does not end in a uh, knockout, it's Paul Artis, Cruz Foster, and Gary Wolf. And this time all three go, judges go, showed go, up on, on time. I'm glad let's to see. Let's go. Let's get that's all the way out. Come on. Yeah. We had a little bit of a problem in the first fight. If you're just joining us, in terms of the judges, one minute gone by. Wild swing and a miss with a left hook attempt by two. I'll get you out. Let's go. Come on. They showed that on inside rope. The big swing, wild yep. punches by by two, and he's missing. He's telegraphing. You see, he bends just before he goes to throw it. That's an immediate signal for Kendall to get his head out of the way. Dave Johnson, the third man in the uh, ring with his work cut out, and I guess we're right next to uh, the Mountaineer racetrack, and it's very appropriate to have a Dave Johnson in the house. That makes sense. It's a different Dave Johnson. Not down the stretch they come. Well, I wonder if we're going to go down the stretch in this fight. Tua has other ideas. He wants to end it right now with one left hook. Now watch this entire round to a step, follow, step, follow, step, follow, beat the jab right hand. There was at least one attempted counter. Step, follow, step, follow, no punches. There's a half part of jab. Well, Kendo very confident, right, smiling. Right, right. Let me have it. Let me have it. Come on. Come on. Hangs Come on. on top of Okendo. Okendo's in charge. He's dictating the pace. Come 
Come on now. Stop that head. David Tua continues to have his problems against these mobile fighters, tall fighters with long reaches, a lot of movement. And you also have to factor in, perhaps, the notion of uh, too many cooks stirring the stew. This is his third trainer in a short period of time. Well, I can understand with some frustration and no improvement that you have to fix something, and the trainer's one of the biggest keys, but I think some of the things he has to fix is within his, within his own mindset, and I just can't see him at that weight being affected. It takes a tremendous amount of energy to move something that big quickly and often. But yet, as we, have, more as we have mentioned all along, ah! he can turn a fight or end it in a hurry. That is true.